Hi guys, happy new years. Hope everyone had an amazing end of the year and had a great time with family and friends. Bringing you a market recap for the year. So I'll go ahead and jump right into it. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen right here. So basically it was a pretty rough um, year, 2022 for the equity markets. Um, so you can see here, S&P basically fell 19.4%. They're saying it's the worst year since 2008, but I, I think that's a little misleading considering that March uh, 2020, um, all the main indexes basically fell up, uh, somewhere around like 30% in a short period of time. Um, so sometimes these uh, articles be a little misleading. Um, so yeah, basically um, for the year, the S&P fell 19.4%. NASDAQ got hammered, fell 33%. The Dow, um, which is uh, the one that fell the least, fell uh, 9%. Um, and then the bond market, which is basically the market of everything, because that's where uh, borrowing and lending basically um, uh, takes place, got really hammered um it, it's really bad the bond market you just don't want to be in it um so it's been one of the worst years for the bond market um as it says here in modern history uh so yeah rates went up um 2022 so the 10-year treasury rose um one point 5% of the beginning of 2022, and it ended the year at 3.88%. That's basically the one that people use to kind of track um, inflation, the 10-year treasury. And then again, rising rates hit the housing market. Average 30-year fixed mortgage rate finishing the year near 6.4%. So a 30-year uh, mortgage is costing you an interest of 6.4% as per the year ends. Tesla itself, which I, I was kind of like, couldn't make sense of it for the longest time um, in terms of what it was selling for. But then I guess it was like enthusiasm. Um, and then just the market loved Elon Musk. Like, uh, you know, and now is the opposite. Market hates Elon Musk. And Tesla is getting hammered because of that. And on top of that, um, Elon Musk kind of overpaid for Twitter. He paid, I believe, twice what Twitter is worth. And he used uh, Tesla stock shares as collateral in his purchase of Twitter. So that might have something to do with how badly... Um, Tesla is getting hammered, Tesla stock, uh, which is down, according to this article, 65% for the year, um, which that is a lot. But then again, I, I, it was overvalued to begin with, like extremely overvalued. Um, the only sector that did any good this year out of the 11 sectors in S&P was the energy sector. Um, and it basically, for the year, it had a return of somewhere approximately um, 7%. So, I mean, the only sector that did good this year um, was energy. So if you were in energy, you probably made some money, even though um, the Fed has been basically fighting uh, energy due to their goal to bring inflation down, right? Um, and then again, it's just here going into tech sector got completely, completely hammered um, in all kinds of uh, tech companies. So this is a ETF, uh, tech sector XLK fell 28% this year, even communication services like media and stuff like that fell 38% um, 2022. And then again, the dollar uh, increase in strength and purchasing power, that's how they're fighting inflation. And the crypto market, that's another story. That got completely, I don't know, 80% plus losses, 100% um, losses for certain people. That's crazy. Um, 
so yeah basically the tech um the tech sector tends to get really really hammered when interest rates goes up because um basically tech companies are um capital intensive they have to borrow a lot to maintain um an advantage or a competitive advantage via research and development so investing a lot in producing new uh technologies and and better technologies than other companies that's how tech companies basically uh keep an edge they have to um invest a lot of money in creating new technologies and so forth so it is very highly um capital intensive business means they need to invest a lot of money and therefore they have to borrow a lot of money so being rates are get going higher that is definitely not a very good thing for um tech companies uh and that's basically why they've been getting hit so hard with the uh, increase in rates um on another note something that i've been kind of looking into because it's uh interesting um there's something I like to watch. It's like a indicator that kind of gives you an idea how um, a country's uh, bond market is performing. There's like certain different uh, metrics. One of them that is that I like to watch is cap foreign capital inflow, uh, meaning foreign money coming in and buying uh, American bonds and foreign capital outflow which is foreign money exiting from the american market and selling um bonds whether it is uh government bonds or corporate bonds like an apple bond apple sells a bond and to um basically get money for one of the uh, capital expenditures they want to do or invest in something Apple will sell you a bond. So that's the bond market is basically the lending and borrowing mar market. Um, so Japan and China, uh, which are pretty big economies have been basically exiting the bond market. And I mean, it makes sense. When I mean the bond market, the, Amer the US government debt bond market been basically exiting the market, which makes sense considering the bond, mar bond market has performed really really bad um in 2022 because when interest rates go up that bond you purchase becomes less valuable because they continue issuing new contracts every amount every x amount of time and every time they release or issue new bonds those new bonds are paying higher interest rates than the one you purchase Therefore, yours is going to sell for cheaper than the one that is paying a um, higher interest that recently was uh, came to market or was sold by uh, the U.S. Treasury. Um, so when interest rates go up, the value or worth of those bond contracts continue to go down. So that could be a reason why, I mean, Japan, China are kind of exiting the American bond market and selling instead of buying. But that gives you an idea that foreign money is leaving the country instead of investing in the country. Um, so basically this article goes into China um, reducing at their US government bonds and, and Japan as well, which then again, China is, the. Uh, world's second largest economy even though they're going through the whole zero covid and their market is not very healthy in itself um it's been doing it's, it's did pretty pretty horrific in 2022 uh the chinese markets so um yeah so it's it's pretty much a global thing it's not just the united states um so uh, uh, something I found interesting in this article is, so this is kind of what I was telling you on the basis, U.S. Treasury saw net foreign inflows. So money coming in of $99 billion in May, the largest since March 2021, from outflows, money leaving, uh, foreign money leaving of 
one billion uh, in April. And then it just goes on Federal Reserve raising rates to fight inflation. Um, and this is uh, interesting. So they're not only exiting the bond market, Japan and China, but here it states um, foreigners sold U.S. equities in May for the fifth straight month, amounting to $9.15 billion from outflows of $7 billion in April. So basically, um, foreigners are exiting the American market, so the equity market, and as well as the U.S. Uh, corporate bond market. Um, has more compared with so it's been slowing down the purchasing of uh u.s corporate bonds posted inflows in may of 4.46 billion compared with inflows of 22.5 billion the previous month foreigners were not net buyers of u.s corporate bonds for five straight months so this basically is saying that um foreign money is not being invested in American corporate bonds. They're actually slowing down their purchasing. Um, so they're not purchasing as much. So it's been uh, constantly somewhat reducing. Um, so that also shows U.S. residents once again reduce their holdings of long-term foreign securities with net sales of $22 billion. So basically, uh, Americans are also selling foreign assets. So it's basically the whole global market is coming down. It isn't just the United States. Um, so some interesting stuff I was kind of like looking into and just stood out to me. Um, and swap over here right quick. So uh, this is basically um, the major indexes, the Dow Jones, um, S&P 500, NASDAQ, and the Russell 2000, which is the um, top 2000 uh, mid cap. Uh, so small businesses in um, small to middle businesses in, in America. Um, so basically all the indexes have um, lost value uh, in 2022. Um, Dow, like it was saying on the on the article, down 10%. Um, the S and P is down something like 20%. Nasdaq down something like 33%, and then the Russell is down. 28%. So this is basically the American market right there in a picture. Um, all the major companies in the American market are within one of these uh, indexes. So it kind of gives you an idea of the health of the American economy. Um, and then I don't really use, um, I don't rely on the charts too heavily, but I like to look at them to kind of get an idea of, again, uh, historical um prices and from what i'm seeing all the major um indexes have a pretty decent downtrend so they're just basically um what that basically means is there's uh, lower lows and um lower highs so prices continue to go down and down and down and so forth um so uh the crypto market, which is another thing in its own self, down. And I like using this uh, ETF is GBTC. It's basically a ETF, so a basket of all the major um, cryptocurrencies, Bitcoin, Ethereum, and, and so forth in one um, ticker symbol. So it's like a basket of all those cryptocurrencies. Uh, the more known ones in one um, basket. And this, I like look, looking at this one because it basically gives you an idea where the crypto market is and not very good, uh, down something crazy, 84%. And, it, and then I don't look at it as, oh, down 84% because if you swap it over, 
um this is pretty bad when you look into how much you have to make just to break even if you bought somewhere up there you got to make something like 530 percent return from where you are now to just go back to where you potentially where someone who entered the market up here um so that uh it's tough this is not not a good year for crypto um and then tesla like i was saying tesla to me was always overvalued didn't make any sense but then again it just kept going up kept going up kept going up kept going up until now um the tide has shifted basically and it just keeps going down it keeps going down it keeps going down um so it's down 69 percent basically from its highs um and then again i don't really use the charts but sometimes i i, I like kind of like understanding them and i find them interesting because sometimes the probabilities depending on certain patterns can potentially go the way that pattern has um gone in the past so in this example this is what they call the head and shoulders it's the head the shoulders and typically this pattern in a chart signifies that there's a probable chance that the stock is going to sell off and at some point but then again this stuff is not guaranteed um or it's probability thing right it can because in reality no one knows where the prices of these things are going but these kind of sometimes signal a probability of a sell-off and in this case i find it super um interesting that that is exactly what happens um so kind of like the pattern is basically the emotion of the investors um so i find that super interesting um and then the bond market this is what i've been talking about because this is where borrowing and lending comes from basically for the whole economy and um doesn't make any sense is an inverted yield curve basically meaning long-term interest rates are lower than short-term interest rates so you can basically see here a U.S. a united states 30-year government bond is paying you a 3.9 percent interest rate and then on the other hand a three-month government bond is paying you 4.3 percent why would you hold the 30-year bond that is paying you a 3.9 percent um rate of interest when you can just lend your money out for three months and receive 4.3 percent interest i mean just think of it logically it doesn't make any sense right their short-term uh bond is paying you more interest than the long-term bond when you have to lend out your money for a longer term period so i mean just looking at it, that logical um it just doesn't make any sense whatsoever um and then, yeah, I like watching the bond markets because something that I find interesting is that when the bond market collapses, so does everything else. Uh, that basically means that lending and borrowing by institutions such as banks have halted. Um, so that's basically what's going on. And then with the increase of interest rates, uh, that pushes the value of the dollar of the actual U.S. dollar bill. Um, up which is bad for equities it's bad for stocks real estate it's bad um for equities period but it's good for bringing inflation down because that's basically what they're doing um to fight inflation so um knowing the market is definitely not ideal there are ways that because basically like i was sh showing the s p 500 nasdaq russell and the dow basically all retirement accounts like 401ks and that kind of stuff are inside or invested in in some of the companies or a mixture of the companies in these indices and if they're down that much that means your retirement account is potentially down in the year of 2022 right so basically ignoring the market is not ideal it's not a good strategy um and and um because there are ways to protect yourself and that is via fixed 
and index investments. So you kind of remove yourself from market risk. Um, but yeah, I make an effort to look at both sides of the coin. And definitely I prefer the bull, a bull market. Why? Because it's, it's just easier to make money. Um, but from what I'm seeing, it's it's hard to debate that this is most likely or seems to me personally to be a bear market, meaning equity prices are just basically going down. And from looking at the trend, it seems like they're going to continue to go down. But then again, I don't know. I don't have a crystal ball. I'm just kind of sharing what I'm watching. And um, by observing, just by observing, I learn a lot. So yeah, thank you guys for watching. And I hope I shared some valuable information with you today. And uh, I hope you have an awesome uh, and great start to your year. And um, if there's anything in the world I could do for you, feel free to shoot me a comment or uh, or just hit me up. All right. Talk to you guys.